Okay, hi everyone and welcome to a brand new video. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the Julia programming language. Now, this language is relatively new, but it has been gaining a lot of traction in recent years. It's very popular in the AI and data science community, and that's why we're here to ask that is this going to be the language that's going to overthrow Python from the throne of AI and data science? Now, if any of this isn't very clear to you, no worries, because we're going to explain everything in a minute. So like we said, Julia gets mostly associated with data science. So there are a series of languages in data science, and I would say, personally, in my opinion, that the top four are these, the following. So we have the established kings and queens of the data science community, which are Python and R. Both of them are staple languages. Almost any data science knows how to program in both Python and R, and they have been on top of things for a while now and they will continue to stay that way for the next few years. However, we do have some up and coming languages, which are Julia and Scala. So Scala as well as Julia have been gaining a lot of popularity in recent years in data science. They are new, so they have some new functionalities that they bring to the table that make people excited about them. I have a video on Scala and whether you should learn it. I will link it down below. So if you're interested in that language as well, you can check it out. Okay, so our video is about Julia. So let's talk about Julia. First of all, what is it? So what is this programming language? What is this mysterious new programming language that you have heard of passingly? So it is a general purpose programming language. So just like Python, it's general purpose. It is high level and dynamic. It has been growing in popularity in recent years in the data science industry. So like we said, it's commonly associated with mostly data science and it is free and open source. So that's what makes it another perk of Julia. So Python as well is free and open source. So why has it been gaining this traction? Why is it gaining popularity? The, things, the thing about Julia is that the creators that made this language were actually aiming to make something better than the existing languages. So that was the goal and that was what went into the development of Julia. The thing is that they said that they were tired of the trade-offs. They were tired of having a language like Python that's so powerful, but it's interpreted and that makes it slow. And they were tired of having another language with a strength and a weakness. So they tried to bring all the strengths of the different languages in data science and put them all together in one. It is extremely fast. We're talking C-like speed, like it's fast as C. Um, which is a low-level language, so for a high-level language, it's, it's extremely fast. And it was specifically created for data science and machine learning. So unlike Python, Python was actually a general purpose, and you can use Python for pretty much anything, from web development to mobile development to desktop apps to pretty much anything, and AI and machine learning. So it's not its own purpose. However, that isn't the case for Julia, which was created specifically for this purpose. Now, when we talk about Julia, the first thing you're going to mention is speed. Like we said, it borders on C with the speed it provides. That makes it much, much faster than other data science languages. We know Python can be quite slow. However, recently we have new packages that, make Py that attempt to make Python faster. However, not as fast as Julia. We have R, which is much, much slower than C. We're talking maybe a thousand times slower than C. Whereas Julia can be either as fast as C or a few times slower than C, which gives us a, a huge advantage and that's what makes people interested in it. So when people talk about Julia, they hear speed and it gets people's attention because people like faster programs. Now, what makes it fast is the JIT compiling. So JIT stands for just in time. Julia is compiled at just in time. So it's basically compiled, compiled right before runtime. So it's not compiled as uh, separately. It's compi compiled right before runtime or it's compiled at runtime using the LLVM framework. And that's what makes it truly fast. And this is where it beats languages like Python using its speed. So like we said, Julia is for data science. We said it was made specifically for data science, which gives this a huge advantage to other languages in the field. The math functions in Julia are very good. That's one of the main pros of Julia, is that the math in it is super nice. It's, they're very intuitive. 
So the way you would write math functions on paper, it's pretty much very similar to the way you would code them in Julia. And that's what makes it good for scientists, for mathematicians, for people interested in data science and AI. It's just the way the math that you learn if you're a PhD student and you learn math at college and it's just the same thing. You write it the same way, which makes it all the more intuitive. And it's specifically made for scientific computing, machine learning, data mining, large-scale linear algebra. Like in Python, you would need the library NumPy to use linear algebra in a nice and fancy way. However, it's all, all built in in Julia, so there's no need for external libraries. And it's really good for distributed and parallel computing because they attempt to make it faster and utilize all the resources that your machine provides. Like we said, so it's there for big data. It utilizes everything that your machine provides. So if you have multiple cores, it's good for parallelization, shared memory threads, memory mapped arrays. So it's just really integrated with big data because it's a new language and takes account the problem of big data that we have. So similar to Scala, Scala as well takes account big data and it's very good for big data analysis. So if you're someone who works with a lot of data, if your company works with a huge volumes of data, this could be something your company can look into. So moving on, Julia versus Python, because essentially the question we asked in this video is, is will P Julia beat Python? Will it overthrow Python from being the king of data science or AI? So just some similarities that they're both open source. Now, while Python is object-oriented, Julia has both object-oriented and functional programming. This is a trait of Scala as well. Again, if you want any information on Scala, you can check out the video linked down below. So, Python is dynamically typed. Julia is also dynamically typed, but you can specify types beforehand to increase the speed. So, it's there to just bring you the best, best of both worlds and make your life easier and faster as a programmer. Another thing that you can do with Julia is that you can call functions from C, Fortran, Python, R, and other languages. You can actually even port code from Python and MATLAB and R. So that's really what makes it powerful and makes it an easy transition. No one ever likes a new language that just isolates everything else in the industry because it's unlikely that anyone will just simply migrate to it. However, when a language is friendly and it somewhat relates what you already know in previous language to its own work, you get more inspired to learn it. And that's another pro of Julia. One thing that we have to note, however, so when we're comparing Julia and Python and you're asking, should you learn this? You're wondering if you should learn this new language, this new fancy shiny language. Do you want a smaller community? So you have to take into account the fact that new languages have small communities. They're unlike the old and big languages that we have. So if you Google Python, I'm sure you can keep searching through thousands of pages of Google just to find a billion Python tutorials for beginners. And you can also find so many Python online communities, uh, so, ma so much Python debugging on Stack Overflow. So you can pretty much think of any other that you have and it will be there on Stack Overflow. It's very likely someone already has it. Now, Julia has a smaller community, meaning less tutorials less blog content, less videos, less books. So this is something to keep in mind if you're a learner who likes to just explore the community. Obviously there is a community because it has been gaining traction in recent years and gaining popularity, but it's definitely not as big as an established language like Python or perhaps Java, if you, you know what I mean. It also indicates when there is a smaller community, there are less people willing to code third-party libraries. So a major strength of Python, the, there is a library for pretty much anything. You have a library for any type of thing that you require in your application. Meanwhile, in Julia, that could not be the case. Now, one good thing about Julia is that the developers behind Julia are constantly working on providing us with new frameworks and libraries and code. Meaning, it's just not stopping with its development and it's not solely relying on the community. So it's not a big issue, but if you're a good programmer, then you could probably work your way with a smaller community. If this is your first language, which I doubt it is because you wouldn't be here, then you wouldn't want to go for Julia. It also has a large scientific community, so despite the general purpose programming community being small, the scientific community is large because people in science and data science have been getting more and more into Julia. So some final thoughts that you should take into account when deciding whether or not you want to learn this language. So, 
Python is definitely more user-friendly and suitable for beginners. If you don't know Python, I suggest learning that first because it's, first of all, a language that pretty much anyone should know. You can use it for pretty much anything. Meanwhile, if you actually do know Python, maybe you can go ahead and learn Julia. For data science, it shows a lot of promise. It shows a lot of a good future that's coming ahead in the next 5-10 years. So if data science is your industry, if you're a scholar or just someone who does data analysis at a company, then maybe you should go ahead and learn it. So in the scientific community, it's here to stay, like we said, and you should learn it if you're in this industry. It should not be your first programming language. So I already said this, but it's important to stress, this isn't your first programming language. This is not what you would teach a group of first year CS students at college. All right, so it's just not meant for that. It will be growing in the coming years. So like I said, next five, 10 years, you will see a lot of development in the, fut in the Julia um, language, as well as you will see brand new features getting added to this language. So the developers constantly say that they are adding more and more features. For example, they're adding a new package for web development. So a weakness of Julia versus Python is that Python can be used for pretty much anything. However, for web development, we are getting new packages in Julia. So they're attempting to sort of become that sort of language to sort of involve different things and industries in their language. And finally, not many people know Julia, so if you're a data scientist, you already know Python, maybe R, and you think in the future you'd like to work with Julia, you can learn it, get an edge, because in a few years when more Julia positions open, you will be the first, one of the like top people who already know Julia, who already have an edge, already have maybe some projects on their resume. So if that's the case, that's a good plus for you, you can probably get yourself a great job. And Finally, just make sure to understand the limitations of following a new language. However, Julia is probably now more established than it was a few years ago. So at this point, these limitations are getting less and less. So hopefully you were you found this video useful. I hope you enjoyed it. And please leave a like and comment if you did. And let me know if you will be learning Julia and adopting it in your career. Goodbye.